Hello. As you see, uh, this is not a professional recording. I record myself in my kitchen, and also it is not a controlled environment. A phone can may ring, someone may enter. <laughs> uh, my wife and uh, kids are out, but they could interrupt this. Well, this is life. I cannot control. I'm not control freak. This is my tea. I will introduce you uh, about more than 40, less than uh, 50, I believe, books. Um, basically, semi randomly picked from my shelf. Now, I will not spend much time on each book. I will just display here, maybe say a few words, sometimes nothing at all because it will take too long. Okay. As I said, it is semi-random, mostly randomly picked. Maybe two books are placed in certain order, the rest of it are random. Okay, the first one, random, is uh, a symbolic language, correct? Uh, Bourdieu, the name of it, I hope you can see it. It is a symbolic uh, language and symbolic power. Uh, and this is a French philosopher, fantastic book. I highly recommend you, anyone who is interested about the power of language, about the rituals, and if you wonder why priest is praying in Latin or mullah is in Arabic, uh, in countries where people do not understand these languages, the answer is here. The next book is uh, John Allen Paulus, the Inemeracy book. He has a sequel for this. Uh, one of them is uh, Beyond Inemeracy, a well-written book. For those who are not mathematicians, from real life examples, provide beautiful examples to show how mathematics is very important and how we make big errors when we don't calculate prop properly. Um, this one, the third book, The Genius by Harold Bloom. He is a Yale professor, uh, uh, literary critic, beautiful book, about 100 major literary works and, and their authors. And uh, I really enjoyed this book. I highly recommend those who like literature. Harold Bloom, the gen a genius. Next one is Wittgenstein. This is Philosophical in, in, uh, Investigations. He has also Blue Book or Brown Books, Tractatus. He's out of the box philosopher, fantastic. And uh, usually he focuses on language. He's very analytical, very interesting. Uh, and uh, Intelligent Design by Dembski. And uh, this is basically called uh, Creationist, but this is design, intelligent design. Uh, it is a book, if you are evolutionist, uh, which I am, uh, I believe in evolution, but I believe in a designed evolution because, well, it's not time to, I had discussed this with uh, the president of atheist organization, American atheist organization, Dr. Silverman. You may see our discussion on this topic uh, but one and a half hour fantastic discussion uh, about God's existence and evolution. Um, okay, next book is, I forgot the number of this book, basically one, two, three, four, five, six book. This is, uh, what is it? Losing faith in faith, fantastic topic. This is so far the best critics to Christianity. I have ever read, uh, very powerful, well written, especially for anyone, you don't need to be an academician, it doesn't really, it's not difficult to read, but beautiful, well documented, well made points in this book by Dan Barker, he was a priest in his previous life, <laughs> well, anyway, he is a reborn atheist. Okay, and uh, this one is Exploring Islam in a New Light. This is the old cover. Uh, the new 
ones which was published by Brainbow Press I gave away and I ended up with this one by Abdul Rab. He is a Harvard graduate uh, a doctor in economics. This is a well-written book about uh, Islam and he is uh, basically promoting a Quran alone based uh, epistemology in Islam. It is a beautiful, well-written uh, book and a great uh, basically advocate for Islamic reform. Okay, this one is Universal History of Numbers by Ifra. Wow, this is a lovely book. If you see so many different chapters, and uh, basically, is it upside down? I don't know. Anyway, this is a lot of graphs, a lot of uh, basically fantastic information about the history of mathematics. And uh, I used the chapter 19 of this book about numbers, uh, uh, Arabic numerals, uh, which, where is it? Anyway, you will see it here. Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, okay, chapter 19 is about Arabic numerals, Hebrew numerals and stuff. Anyway, I highly recommend especially to those who follow the storytellers, uh, um, Sunni or Shiite scholars, they have no clue about mathematics, they made up stories about object system, the, but historically it was a numerical system used during time of Prophet Muhammad during revelation of the Quran. Until two centuries after the revelation of the Quran, Abjad Hawas Hukli, that sequence, and for each letter and there is a value, number assigned, that was used during time of revelation of the Quran. Later it was abandoned in favor of the number, uh, the numeric system that was taken from India and later it was exploited, abused by charlatans, of course. Um, this one is another book on Jesus, Jesus Interrupted by Ehrman. This is a very interesting critical analysis of the Bible and history of Christianity. I highly recommend those who are curious about the Bible. And as you know that, the four Gospels were basically uh, selected uh, by a Nicene Conference 325 uh, years after Jesus. And it was led by Tertullian, one of the most bigoted guys in history. <laughs> uh, anyway, and uh, the word Trinity was coined at that time, basically. Islam and the Nicene Conference. Uh, Islamic Theory of Evolution by Dr. Shanawas. This is a wonderful book. Uh, the picture should not deceive you. It is not about disparaging uh, Darwin. In fact, it was a the theory of evolution that centuries before Darwin, clearly promoted by uh, Muslim scientists such as uh, Ibn Sina, uh, Al Haytham, um, Ibn Khaldun, or many others, Ikhwan and Safa. And uh, he documents them, in fact, through both Eastern and Western uh, resources. Uh, one of them is interesting, is uh, there's a quotation in the end of the book. I want you to read it yourself. Um, I wrote just an introduction for this book, but this is a th I highly recommend you. And what I close means the Western, uh, unfortunately, academia do not ignore or hides this fact that contemporaries of Darwin accused Darwin of <laughs> plagiarizing using uh, Muslims' idea. This was very uh, clearly uh, is uh, a Muslim idea, the Quranic idea. I'm not saying it started from them, but it's fact. And later Muslims, when they indulge in stories, fabricated stories called Hadith and Sunnah and the Book of Sects, they ignore the Quran and they start lo losing, even distorting the meaning of concept and words in the Quran. Uh, if you look at uh, Quran, a reformist translation, my English translation of the Quran, you will see the exposition, how much distortion is made in the message of Muhammad, the lost prophet, exactly similarly that is done to Jesus. If Jesus comes today, he will be considered as anti-Christ 
by today's clergymen. And Muhammad, if came, he would be considered as the judge. He would be considered as an apostate, deserved to be killed by today's Sunnis and Shiites all alike. Anyway, this is a fantastic book. I highly recommend you. And uh, there is a quotation from John William Draper, first president of American Chemical Society, a contemporary of Darwin, a former president of New York University. That's very interesting. Uh, Acknowledgement of fact, confession. Anyway, Noam Chomsky's book, uh, he has written many books. He is one, perhaps uh, the most uh, referenced, uh, as far as I know, uh, living scholar. Uh, I have been communicating with him for years through email and met him. I had an interview with him uh, at MIT. We had an interview and I posted at my YouTube channel. You may listen to that one. And uh, basically, this is about. Uh, American <laughs> history, politics, and imperialism, and also the language of the government. A fantastic book, I highly recommend you. Uh, Hegemon or sort of America's Quest for Global Dominance. This one is Paul Davis, God the New and the New Physics. He has written many, many books, some of them controversial, like the physics of immortality and stuff, which I didn't understand. I couldn't follow some of his. Uh, calculations at all. They are too technical for me. But he's uh, different. Uh, I recommend you to get also this side of the perspective. I think he is at ASU uh, uh, University in Arizona, uh, Arizona State University. He's close neighbor to me, but I didn't really meet him yet. Um, Paul Davis. I think he's originally from Australia, as far as I remember. And the next one is The Blind Watchmaker, or flamboyant, or uh, pretty popular uh, Dawkins. Dawkins. And this gentleman uh, appears to be smart, very smart, and uh, I like his uh, speeches, especially his bashing this uh, uh, cult leader in Turkey, Adnan Oktar, who <laughs> is considering me as his arch enemy, and uh, Four times I've been arrested uh, when I went to Turkey each time because of his complaints, false lies, as he makes up lies about evolution. Uh, anyway, and uh, I have articles written against that, and uh, this is a good book, but unfortunately also, uh, when it comes to some points, he become very simple, very, very kind of surface. Uh, um, I have in uh, one of my articles, I quote from this, I have uh, some points take from here and criticize it. Uh, I recommend you to read that article at 19.org. Uh, what is the name of that article? I uh, should say. Um, <clears throat> what was it? Gosh, how can I forget intelligent design or smell the cheese, something like that. Um, okay, but smell the cheese, that's the word <laughs> you will not forget, it is in the title of my article. Put intelligent design, smell the cheese, maybe in quotation, while you are searching from Professor Google, the biggest professor, living professor. Um, anyway, next one is Allah, Liberty and Love. This is a well-written book by Irshad Banji, and Irshad Banji is a reporter. She is not a scholar uh, in a literal sense, but she is well read and a fantastic uh, mind. I highly recommend you this book. And um, she has uh, other books. Uh, you can check it from Amazon.com. And um, she also participated to, to one of our conferences. Uh, I organize conferences, international conferences, on uh, critical thinkers for Islamic reform. Uh, I think she participated in one in Atlanta at Emory Law School. Uh, Professor Abdullah Naim was the co-organizer. And uh, later we had a conference at Oxford University, and later in Kazakhstan, and in Europe, in, uh, anyway, uh, in several other places. Uh, hopefully we'll continue those. Next one is Cabinet of Mathematical Curiosities. When I was in London, I got this book from a bookstore, a famous bookstore in London. Uh, this is by 
Ian, how do you say his name? Ian Ian Stewart. And uh, fantastic book, lovely. It is, these are for fun. And uh, please make your children enjoy mathematical uh, questions, problem solving in early age, basically. And um, there are many these sorts of books uh, I have. Basically, hundreds of them. I am collector of mathematical <laughs> puzzle books. <laughs> One of my favorite books. Before going to bed, I enjoy reading them. Sometimes, not going before bed. Anyway, uh, this one is a logic book, Introduction to Logic, by uh, Copy. Well, we'll call it Copy. Ir Irving, Copy, and Carl Cohen. This is uh, so far the most uh, basically. Uh, popular logic book in the United States. This has been for years around. In fact, about 11 years ago when I started teaching logic at college, this was the book. Uh, I think at that time it was the third or fourth edition. Now it is uh, 13th, 14th edition is out there. This is a fantastic book. Just look at this is symbolic logic. Initially there is some uh, chapters, introductory chapters, and later you will see it becomes like mathematics and uh, yeah this is a symbolic logic uh, that and uh, here you see the first pages uh, beautiful summary and the last pages basically and uh, look at this for example his 19 rules of inference here and uh, other uh, rules Again, I highly recommend you, though it is technical, uh, it is considered um, as a equivalent of some math uh, higher than uh, general. Okay, discipline and punish. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't want to read his name because I may mispronounce, you may think I am cussing in English. <laughs> um, this is a beautiful book about uh, the emergence of prison system in the Western world. The thesis is basically the prison did not come about just for uh, humanitarian reasons, but for other reasons. But it is a provocative, very interesting, informative book. Probably. And uh, this one for those who would like to get just a snack about philosophy. Uh, 101 Ethical Problems, fantastic, interesting, curious problems about ethical dilemmas, conundrums, interesting things. You see, it is two small letters, but I recommend you to, for basically high school kids, uh, this is a very good book. I wish we had in core curriculum, critical thinking and philosophy classes in uh, middle and high schools. This is the, one of the biggest problems in American uh, education system and also in the world. Children are considered just spectacle cans of knowledge and just they put fragments and pieces and volumes of information but not really preparing them how to process this with critical thinking. And uh, in college, when I see college students, they are so gullible! They may know this and that, a lot of kind of history and a lot of factual information, but you can fool them any time with any claims. They have no... Unfortunately, when I say I'm too much generalizing, of course, there are among them a few critical thinkers, but great majority, unfortunately, uh, people who study in basically normal conventional way, and they don't become critical thinkers. Therefore, we end up with horrible governments, with warmongers, with cheaters, with liars, all around the world, political, religious. And people tend to just believe anything. And this is the best people for those people who sell them anything <laughs> on TV. Look at the level of the commercials, basically. They make mockery uh, <laughs> with all the audacity, they make the mockery of your intelligence brain and they are selling you, they know their audience, they have infantilized the whole population through so-called education system. 
And uh, this is another book. This is uh, my book, 19, God's Signature in Nature and Scripture. This is a challenging book. I challenge all the mathematicians and philosophers and anyone who is interested in science or questions about whether there is God or not. And uh, this is my challenge to you. I have challenged, but so far no one dared really to take this channel. I had this uh, ch uh, challenge, a discussion I said with uh, the head of uh, atheist organization and with the uh, president of a skeptic organization in Pasadena, Los Angeles, Michael Shermer, and uh, uh, they all uh, unfortunately failed. And at the University of Arizona, I challenged mathematicians. They can listen to me one hour and they were mute. I challenged a famous mathematician in Turkey, it is also on YouTube. You will see these guys as if something happens to them, they get paralyzed. I challenge them through their own occupation, professional occupation. Recently I was at, uh, in Princeton, my son, uh, younger son, he's accepted there. They invited us for, uh, invited us for preview. I went to several departments, uh, uh, near some departments, I know some professors and they knew me too. And then I went to math department. Ah, this is another story. I met basically two mathematicians. For about 10-15 minutes we discussed this and you should see how these guys become unfortunately pathetic. I'm sorry, they are very smart guys. But they basically they become speechless. And they, he, they try to kind of make kind of some remarks about this and that. And it's a shame. And this is, uh, you will see the picture of Dr. Rashid Khalifa and me the discoverer of this code, and he was assassinated by a terrorist, unfortunately, who were affiliated to Al-Qaeda in 1990 in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I was here with him when morning came, I see police there, unfortunately. And he was a brave guy because he challenged the orthodoxy, all this nonsense going on, ignorance in the Muslim world. Basically, you will see these ones, and mathematical, and a lot of discussions here. Anyway, at the end also you will see uh, the uh, media on this issue in Arabic, in Turkish, and in English uh, media. And uh, okay, I'm going to continue. I have a lot of books in random. I don't know how many minutes we have. Okay, this one is the human body. Uh -huh. I put it this way. Lovely book. I highly recommend you this book. This is one of the best books I have on human body. As you see, beautiful diagrams, pictures, about four or five hundred of them maybe. Beautiful, very good information, very balanced information and pictures. And uh oh, oh, that was not a good one perhaps. <laughs> For the purposes of what? Anyway, go next one. I know this guy got a second book here. And uh, this is also another book, 101 Philosophy Problems. <sighs> and this one is The Power of Logical Thinking by Marilyn Vosavant. She's a very smart lady. I followed for a long time her articles in Parade Magazine. And I have several of her books. She is a very curious mind, and still I remember uh, the Monty Hall questions she, she posed and created such a controversy about that problem. I had no issue with that problem. The moment I saw it, I knew the answer, but I was very surprised that some great mathematicians in big universities, like University of Michigan or Chicago, and uh, some of the mathematicians did not get it. It was a very interesting problem. It requires not really much technical mathematical uh, knowledge, but certain insight about probability. And it is a very good question about to check how your sense of, it's very simple. Anyway, um, but I highly recommend uh, this book too for you guys. And this is uh, the ugliest cover I've ever seen, <laughs> but the most uh, remarkable book, revolutionary book that changed my religious philosophical paradigm in 1986, 1st of July 1986, 
I was a changed man after reading this book in few hours, midnight of uh, 1st of July, just from June to July. And this is by Dr. Rashad Khalifa, a very simple book, but it exposes all the distortions done, not all the major distortions done by today's very well, very easy presentation of this book, you will see. And a lovely, lovely, lovely book. And uh, not only changed my many, many people, directly or indirectly. Some people have changed, some big scholars around the world, from Hadith and Sunnah to accept the Quran alone. They even have no idea about that they were changed through this because either through me or through someone who is influenced me by, or influenced by someone who is influenced by Rashad Khalifa. And some of them become even very unappreciative of his work. They don't know that the root of their things really uh, started from this guy's uh, understanding of the Quran. He discovered the mathematical code of the Quran that was hidden for 1400 years in the Quran, 1406 lunar years precisely, 19 times 74 lunar years. He discovered it in 1974. It is based on 19 and it was hidden in chapter 74, which is known as the chapter, the hidden one, the secret, the covered. Fantastic, uh, how do you say, extraordinary evidence for an extraordinary claim that the Quran is word of God. And many Muslims hate this number and it shows why they, they are in this such mess, trouble, ignorance and backwardness. Exactly. I wouldn't expect from them to appreciate this because what they are in is because they betrayed their God-given mind, reason, mathematics, science, and they followed all these fabricated stories and charlatan, religious charlatans and power brokers, and therefore they are in this shape. Therefore, it's no surprise they, they hate this number 19. They have so much lies and distortions in order or excuses to blind themselves to that one. This is a philosophy gym. This is an easy read book uh, about uh, topics in philosophy, problems, interesting um, about theories um, by uh, Stephen Law. He's got a mathematician, Marie Olivier. I recommend you this book too. It is a beautiful book. Okay, I think I need to put something here to make it a little bit higher. I have already that. Next one is uh, Carl Sagan's. Carl Sagan has uh, many books. This one is uh, one of the easy ones to read because there's uh, separate articles on uh, pseudoscience, paranormal. Uh, by reading this book, you will learn how to become critical thinkers. Thinker and um, Carl Sagan was an astronomer, very famous astronomer, and he has written. I think one uh, he was he had the uh, Cosmos series on TV. He became famous there, Cosmos, and uh, he written he has written a novel called Contact. The Contact. Uh, this is also very interesting. Eleven years after the discovery of the code nineteen. He basically entertains the idea that there is God, God should uh, be expected to prove his word, his message, through a ma mathematics, embedded mathematics, and he basically suggests as an example pi. But it's an interesting uh, topic and also became the topic of, movie, of a movie uh, with the same title, Contact. Um, he's a skeptic and I have also I have a two-round debate before the era of popular internet. At that time there was internet but uh, scholars were using but I communicated with him through snail mail in 1995 when I was doing writing my thesis in philosophy. And um, uh, I think I published it in uh, Running Like Zebras in that book. He's not a zebra but is a he is the one I respect his criticism uh, very sound and flim flam James Randy is a cranky old man oh this is the cover I'm missing let me put the first page you will see new 
uh, editions of this. James Randi, he's a skeptic. He's affiliated with the Skeptic Society. He writes in Skeptic Magazine. I like his uh, book. This is fantastic about uh, paranormal. But uh, we don't have a good uh, relation because once I challenge him, his reaction, because he says, I'm offering one million dollar. I say, I don't really need your one million dollar. But I challenge you regarding the evidence for God's existence about mathematical stuff. His response was very juvenile, very immature, with cuss words, pejorative, stupid, unbelievable. I was very disappointed in him. Unlike Michael Sherman, who is a gentleman, but he got also arrogant, therefore he a little bit, uh, he was embarrassed uh, in debate. And, uh, but uh, Michael Shermer uh, is a much more character-wise respectable person. I sent uh, my greetings to him. And in fact, I have his book randomly came after this one. Okay, I put it this way. You can put your head this way, look at it <laughs> sideways. I don't know, let me take this one down. Yes, Michael Shermer, why people believe in weird things. Abducted by aliens, which is in your neighborhood, reading people's thoughts about many, many so-called paranormal issues. He's a good author and he, has, uh, he was writing in Scientific American until recently. I don't know whether he's continuing uh, my subscription ended, I didn't renew. Uh, I recommend his other books and also they have some also films. And this one is a euphemism and dysphemism. This is about the use of language uh, to fool people. And governments are the master of this, government propaganda and media. Uh, they use words in order to sell you bad ideas. A very important subject. I highly recommend this book. And there was another one, many, many, like this, like Double Speak by William Lutz. Lutz, L-U-T-Z, perhaps. But um, double speak or euphemism, this is a good book and the other one also. Anyone who is interested about research on Sharia, on basically today's corrupt sectarian Islam, which has nothing to do with the Islam promoted uh, by Muhammad in the Quran, this book is a fantastic uh, volume and very about from contracts to many, many issues from. Uh, uh, gosh, from prayers, from uh, everything basically involving family law, contracts, and uh, corporations, uh, partnership. I mean. Okay? This is by whom? Raj Bahala, Islamic law. I went through this one. Most of the issues I know, I, I studied from the classic version of it. But for those who are interested in Sharia, write about it. This is the book you should get by Lexis Nexus. Uh, this is uh, one of the books that uh, skeptical, not really much skeptical, well, we need skepticism about scientific methodology, about uh, scientific enterprise. Uh, Thomas Kuhn, here basically his argument is the Copernican idea of sun-centered universe um, was not necessarily the only explanation because through retrogate the motions and stuff they were able scientists still explain the motion of the planets and stuff with the old Ptolemaic how do you say Ptolemaic system where the earth is the center he has the argument that uh, scientists like all other people they also follow certain conventions they are also under the influence of their peers and stuff about paradigm, paradigm change. Um, this is Mathematical Experience. I highly recommend you. It is one of the best books on uh, basically in general on mathematics, history of mathematics, on topics of mathematics um, uh, by Philip Davis and Ruben Hirsch. This is also on um, unsolved problems in number theory, one of my favorite books about 185 theories, this is volume one, uh, in about uh, five categories and six, ca six categories is not classified basically. Um, 
I highly recommend these books to look at this. It is uh, a kind of uh, very documented also, a lot of references there. Very briefly, concise explanation of uh, theories that not solved yet. Problems. Okay. I said theories, no. Okay. Losing my religion, a call for help by Lang, Jeffrey Lang. He's a mathematician. Uh, I don't know when he became Muslim because, and uh, I'm glad that he didn't change his name to an Arabic name because Arab nationalism took over through Hadith and Sunnah. They uh, inserted their racism and nationalism through Hadith. And therefore, you, oh, in order to become Muslim, you need to kind of wear a tarts like them, <laughs> and ride camel, drink camel's urine, and uh, change your name to an Arabic name. No, 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 it has nothing to do with Islam, changing the names. Any names is if your name beautiful in your language, keep your name. And uh, he's also a thinking person, a mathematician, since he later became Muslim, therefore he didn't really lose his brain in indoctrination from childhood that he is able to see the problem, with, especially in Hadith, he has a lot of problems with Hadith. Hadith means hearsay stories fabricated 200 and or 500, between 200 and 500 years after Prophet Muhammad, an attribute to Prophet Muhammad. I heard from this, he heard from that, heard from that, heard from that, he said, he saw Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad said, there is cure in camel's urine. Or, if in front of the prayer a donkey, a pig, and a woman passes, your prayer is nullified. Or, I saw Prophet Muhammad in one night, he visited all his nine wives and he had sex with them. Hmm. <laughs> this guy is <laughs> peeking through something. Those kind of stories, and some of them good, some of them you can see in Chinese proverb or any kind of normal people's uh, journals, writings, but Satan uh, inserted a lot of troubles, like stories uh, stoning to death, like putting women in sack from head to toe, like justifying slavery, beating women, or killing the children, or killing those who disbelieve, become an apostate. These are all against the Quran and has nothing to do with Quran, just the opposite. Basically, they resurrected, they resurrected the previous idol worship, ideas of ignorance, uh, misogynistic ideas, slavery, brutality, ignorance, superstitions, all through Hadith. And um, I really highly recommend you to read the uh, my book, uh, Manifesto for Islamic Reform, it is available online and PDF form at 19.org. You will see a short, brief comparison of the Hadith and Sunnah with the Quran. And there is a very extensive table there, Hadith and Sunnah and the Quranic verses and why it is made, how it is made, the distortion, and what are the sources of this distortion. Okay, this is another book, a very beautiful book. I love this one very much. The math book, lovely. About 250 interesting math milestones in history. And uh, I just uh, want to show you some pages. We get an idea about this. Lovely, lovely. I just enjoy reading because it is very easy read. As you see, very, very interesting book. Okay, not, not enough. Okay, you got an idea about this book. I just I want you to make to make you love it, especially your children. And this is I am not a fan of history, but this is if I read a history book, this is the first one I read, which I read some of the chapters here. Perspective. From the past, primary sources in Western civilization. And this is the second volume, and this is the first volume. And by whom? 
basically this is James Brophy, Joshua Cole, Stephen Epstein, John Robertson, Thomas McSafely by which uh, company? W.W. W. Norton, New York. I highly recommend you this book. This is the history book you should read. Of course, if you are interested with American history, Zen's History of P American People, I believe the title, that one I would recommend you. And uh, this one is Quran, a reformist translation, uh, together with uh, Lay Salih al Shaybani. He's from Saudi Arabia. And with some consultation with the Martha Schulten Affair, she's professor of Arabic. Uh, three, uh, three of us uh, work on this, but primarily it is um, basically the translation is Saudi, and went, I went through, revised it, and footnotes and appendices, they are mine. And I want to read uh, a beginning uh, blurb from Reza Aslan. A bold and beautiful translation that serves as a timely reminder to all believers that the Quran is not a static scripture, but a living, breathing, ever-evolving text whose sacred words are as applicable today as when they were first uttered by the Prophet Muhammad 14 centuries ago. Irshad Banji says, A testament to the fact that faith need not suffocate reason, this is bound to be among the smartest of smart bombs in the battle of ideas within Islam. If you look at this, you will see this categorically a different translation because it doesn't rely on the sectarian sources or hearsay sources called Hadith and Sunnah. In fact, in the beginning introduction, I picked 15 important verses that has been distorted. There are many, but just 15 of them in an example. I compare with other me uh, popular translation like Yusuf Ali's and uh, Marmaduka Pictals and then compare with them and then analyze argue why our translation is the accurate one why their translation is wrong by using the language of the Quran the very verses of the Quran the sciences consist consistency the art of basically um, it, uh, from etymology to reason. Um, what else? Oh, I have even some more books here. Um, let me try to... Oh, here this one, if you have time. The End of Science. This is a beautiful book by John Horgan. And uh, basically the end of science in philosophy, physics and other areas. Uh, uh, very well written book. I highly recommend you if you are interested in sciences. This is 501 topics basically you want to know. Well, this is about maybe middle school kids. Uh, maybe high school kids is good. Uh, this is a mixture book. Some of them tough like uh, unsolved problems in number theory for example. Some of them are easy to read. And this one is beautiful, also for high school and college kids could be fine. Uh, the most beautiful formulas here, uh, like for example, uh, maybe you like this formula. I like this one. This is, uh, I think this is picked as the best formula by mathematician. Do you see the formula? E to the power of I times pi equals minus one. Lovely. By Euler. And um, this is Critical Thinkers for Islamic Reform. This is the papers uh, submitted by uh, participants, scholars from around the world on uh, basically new perspective on Islam. Very independent critical thinkers. Lovely. Uh, this is also available at Amazon.com. Abdullah and Naim, Abdul Rab, Ahmed Subhi Mansur, Aisha Juman, Aisha Musa, professor, she's at, uh, in New York, Ali Behzad Nia, he was uh, in Iran's uh, first uh, government cabinet after the revolution. Uh, he lasted a few months or one year or so, he had to escape with Beni Sadr. He was in Beni Sadr's cabinet. Amanullah Dissondi, Arnold Yassimol, he's a young uh, scholar in Netherlands. Janer Taslaman, professor, he's uh, 
He has been in, at Oxford University, Harvard. He's teaching philosophy at the Yildiz Technical University in Istanbul. And uh, Christopher Moore, the Lara Hafiz, Al Mahdi Haddu. I think he's a, med a medical doctor in Canada. Feridun Taslimi, he is a critical thinker, a skeptic. Uh, he is also a foundation promotes sciences in the uh, Muslim world. Uh, he's in Atlanta, Farouk Peru, Germaine Huston, she's a professor of, uh, I don't know, he's in language, not language, I forgot, I'm so sorry, Germaine, your area, she uh, is in San Diego. We have Seddin Siddiqui, Iftikhar Ahmed Mehar, Irshad Manji, Qasim Ahmed, he's from Malaysia. My communication with him got cut. In fact, uh, one of his books, uh, uh, I think I wrote an introduction for it. Lais Sari Al Shaiban, Melody Muazzi, she's a lawyer, she's writing for Huffington Post, I believe. She has written uh, many articles. Mike Gauss, he is, I think, in Houston. Are you in Houston or Dallas, Mike? Sometimes I confuse. Um, he's a pluralist. When we come together, we sometimes uh, fall into the argument, but he's a very peaceful, nice guy. Mohammed Muba al Afghani, Mustafa Akil. Mustafa Akil is a Turkish uh, journalist, well known. He has written some books uh, on Islam and politics. Nasir Khadir, Rem um, Nasir Khadir, I think his article didn't make it somehow, his name is in the uh, title, Raymond Catton Kat from Canada, Richard Vos, is uh, I think statistician uh, from one of the universities in, in Georgia, Ruby Amatula, she's a great uh, uh, political uh, uh, person uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, she is the president of Muslim for Peace, Justice, and Progress co-founder. I co-founded with him, with her, him I say. In Turkish, there is no difference between him and her. Sometimes my mind goes Turkish. And uh, Tio Shanavas, Yashar Nuri is Turk, Yashar Nuri is Turk, my friend from Turkey. Unfortunately, his article did not make it. And Yahya Yüksel, my son, was the youngest one. In fact, he made the opening. He has nothing to do really much with religion, but He's a critical thinker, he happened to be there, he wrote an article. Um, okay, anyone else? Um, that, oh, Quran Unchallengeable Miracle by Janar Taslaman. I also recommend you this book. This is, I think, the best book uh, on miracles of the Quran. And The Big Bang Philosophy and God. This is also, I highly recommend, well written by Professor Janar Taslaman. Uh, he recently, since about I think, uh, more than a year, he has been on Turkish TV debating with the atheists and many other scientists. He is uh, a good mind. Ah, Eureka! This is, uh, I have volumes of books. I give uh, gifts to high school kids. This is basically in two pages, about two, three pages, certain concept, scientific or philosophical theories, concepts are discussed and explained, okay? And this is also fun for uh, kids, uh, high school or middle school, lovely, you see, and certain problems with pictures, diagrams, very well chosen puzzles. And this is uh, Running Like Zebras, discussion on mathematical code of the Quran. Here it is, those people whose name there, among them, Carl Sagan is different. He is a scientist. He has a very good uh, uh, discussion. He's not like them, but unfortunately, his name ended up among them. But the rest of them, uh, not really much to say about them. Anyway, this one is by uh, whom? By Michael Hart. He was a historian, I think, University of Chicago, as far as I remember. The 100 greatest. Uh, through certain criteria, he basically lists uh, about 100 historical figures and leaders. Very good for you that if you want to get a certain idea about history, focus on personalities. And uh, lastly, I want to show this one. This is Manifesto for Islamic Reform. In fact, if you get 
the Quran translation that is one of the appendices I put the inserted uh, this book inside this has also that one too okay so far that's it I'm really tired I didn't even drink my tea see you next time I don't know how many books perhaps 49 books uh, I counted before if I counted correctly you got 49 books but I might be wrong at three up or three down okay